Hi. All right, so looking at the poll, looks like most of you want to see what really happened on this trip. Um, a few with the planning and a few with the experience of what you'll get on the trail. So I do start off with the details, go in, but I'll just breeze through it a little bit so you do have that information. So let me go to my screen share. All right, so we have Mount Rainier best laid plans and welcome again, everyone. I do also have the chat feature up in the corner of my screen. So if you do have any questions at any point in time during the presentation, feel free to type them right in there. Uh, and it might automatically just come up in the conversation. It might also, we'll have a special time to answer specific questions. So feel free to add them in there. So, this is the Wonderland Trail. And when we were originally planning for this trip, it's about 93 miles around the mountain. And when you're planning this trip, you can start at a whole bunch of different locations. You can go clockwise, you can go counterclockwise. Uh, there's lots of different options that you can actually have. Uh, but we got the permission to do White River which is up here. And then we were able to walk clockwise, going down, across the bottom, up and around to finish off to the same spot. That was the plan. Um, the lowest elevation on the trails around 2300 and the highest is about 6800. And if you're around in the Chicagoland area, you're only 800 feet above sea level. So it is definitely a much higher elevation than what I am normally used to on a daily basis um, for this particular trip. So that was the, the plan that we originally had. All right, so next is the permits. Uh, it's a lottery style to actually get a permit to do the Wonderland Trail, which means that in March, you put your name in, what you wanna do, what you're hoping to go, where to start, where to finish, and you may or may not get it. It took us three years to actually get a permit. So we were trying multiple years over and over again, hoping the best. Um, once you actually do find out, which was actually mid-April uh, for us, we were able to get flights, we were then doing food, and because we didn't wanna carry the food for the entire trip, we actually did ship it to several drop points along the trail. So that would lighten our loads. Every four days, we'd get new set of food, which was really nice. Uh, getting a map, having your gear, your backpack, sleeping bag. Um, how are you gonna be carrying your water, creating fire, clothes, first aid, personal items, uh, doing research. There's a really great guide online, Wonderland Guides. Highly recommended if you're thinking about uh, either going to Mount Rainier or doing the Wonderland Trail and training. Um, hike with that pack, go on elevation. We don't have much in the Chicagoland area. Uh, some of you are familiar with a place called Swallow Cliffs. It has lots of stairs. So we're able to go up and down and up and down those wearing our backpack and all of our gear. Most people who are on there are fitness people. And so they are uh, wearing very little their athletic gear and they're going up and down and here you are with your backpack and your poles and you're going up and down. You get a lot of looks. Uh, we actually put signs on our backpacks when we were practicing saying we're training for our vacation and we talk to people going up and down. So it was a pretty cool experience that way. Um, let's see here. So the first day, day zero, uh, we actually got to White River and we had to get our national park pass. We checked in at Longmire, got our permits. I always do the junior ranger programs, get my books. Uh, we were able to drop off some food there at that site instead of shipping it. Shipping food is expensive. You have to put it in a five gallon bucket and ship that sealed bucket. Um, then we would drive to White River, which is our starting point. We were gonna set up our camp and talk to our other hikers. Uh, day one was going to be White River to Indian Bar. And if you notice on the screen here, White River is at 4,300 feet right here. And then we would be going to Indian Bar over on this point here. 
Um, so if you notice, we had a little tiny hump. We went down to frying pan and then we had to climb all the way up. Um, Summerland, that's where we we're planning on having a lunch. Um, you get to keep on going up, little dip and then back down. Um, mostly up as you can see. Um, you start in really lush forests. You get to hike through these wonderful alpine fields once you're at higher elevations. And then you get to sort of sleep on this island um, type structure. You have the river actually winding around it. So it's more like a peninsula, um, but it's a pretty, pretty cool spot. So next we were going to go to um, Indian Bar and we go to Nickel Creek. So we had a little bit of up and down, but then it was primarily downhill, 6.8 miles. We were in Alpine zone. Um, we were going to sleep near a creek. We figured that would be great. Nickel, Nickel Creek to Paradise River. So again, we're going down and then we're going back up and down. Um, we crossed Stevens Canyon Road actually a whole bunch of times, about 10 miles that day. And so we're gonna be going up and down and up and down, up and down. Paradise River to Devil's Dream. Uh, basically it's down and then up. <laughs> um, we were gonna be picking up food at Longmire here at the low point where we dropped off on day zero and we'd be a third of the way complete. Then we would be doing Devil's Dream to South Polia. And that is about seven miles, both up and down. As you can see, it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Lots of water crossings. And we would be really close to the Tahoma Glacier. And there were only myself and my boyfriend on this trip. It was just the two of us. Um, we were taking it at our own pace. Uh, so thank you, Douglas, for that question. Day six would be south pulley up to north pulley up. So you can see basically it's up and then down. <laughs> um, there was really no net elevation change, but there was a lots of switchbacks to actually get all the way up um, that hillside and then coming back down. North pulley up to south Mowich. Uh, so again, ups and downs and lots of switchbacks to get down to south Mowich because you're basically heading all the way down there. Day eight, South Mowich to Ipsit Creek. Um, again, almost 10 miles that day. And we'd be going up and down. Uh, we'd pick up food at Mowich uh, Lake, and then we'd be sleeping at the lowest part of the trail, which is that 2,300 feet at Ipsit Creek way down here. Then we do Ipsit Creek to Mystic Lake. It's about eight one. 8.1 miles, it's pretty much all uphill that whole entire day. We're gonna be doing a 3000 feet of elevation uh, gain and we'd be hiking along the Carbon Glacier. So then we had Mystic Lake uh, Sunrise Camp. And so we'd be going up and down again, we end up around the, the same elevation. And then lastly to Sunrise, camp to White River where we started from, get back to the car, and we'd be flying out the day after this. So we were hoping to get a hotel or something, uh, Airbnb, who knows what we were planning on doing to freshen up before we got on the, the, the flight because we knew we'd be basically wearing the same clothes for the, the 11 days that we were out there. Now, how long did we train for this? We basically started training for this particular trip shortly after we found out we were, we got permits. So again, that's mid April and this went, uh, I believe we were in July. So we had a few months to train, which isn't really that long of a time period when you're working a full-time job, you have other things that you're trying to do. Um, so it's basically weekend warrior stuff. Um, on an average weekend walking 10 miles, uh, on flat land through the forest reserves, not a problem. Used to it all the time. Um, even the dogs go out with us and enjoy it. But having the gear and knowing that we had lots of elevation change was that was the big thing. Was trying to get up and down elevation in the Chicagoland area is pretty tricky. So because we were leaving on Saturday from Chicagoland, 
they didn't have a start until Tuesday, just because that's when we can get our permit. So before we hiked, we hiked. Uh, we actually went to Mount Tahoma and got a yurt and hiked there. And if you notice, there is a pretty bloody scraped up knee there. Um, the trails on Tahoma Mount here uh, are all basically crushed pumice and lava stone. And so there was a slight slippage and knee first down into the rocks, slicing it up. Uh, this didn't really heal and stop bleeding until we got back to Chicago the two weeks later. So we already had a, a slight strike against us with an injured knee that would not stop bleeding completely. We were able to clean it up. We were able to put some bandage on and some liquid bandage, um, but it kept on seeping through and being on the knee and you're bending because you're going up and down in elevation constantly, kept on aggravating it. But the trails here were also very cool on Mount Tahoma. So highly recommended as well. So we finally make it to White River here. There's actually a couple deer. They're blurry. They were moving across the trail. This is our campsite. We could literally drive right up to it, which is great. Um, there's a special spot for through hikers on this. So uh, we were actually off to the left of this picture. Uh, and so part of the Wonderland Trail is actually going up this trail right through here. This is where we would technically be coming down on our last day. Woo, we made it back and be able to go back to our cars. So first crossing that we have, White River, Summerlin, uh, that's where we wanted to do lunch. This is glacial runoff um, melt. You can see how gray it is. It's because it's carrying so much sediment from the gray rock that's on this mountain. And it is very icy cold. It is churning constantly. So this is a, a, a bridge that you cross over. We actually had several of these types of bridges. Um, there's a glacier just up from there that's melting. And this is the melt that we're actually getting. Uh, for how heavy are packs? Uh, we are carrying, uh, if you notice over my shoulder right there, the backpacks, they are about 35 pounds full. Uh, and that's with our four days of food, um, first aid. We were carrying a lot of water because when we get into the Alpine areas, we weren't sure how much water was actually going to be there. We didn't want to have to melt snow um, to hopefully have water. So um, they were fairly heavy. And most of that is actually, uh, for me, is my sleeping bag and my food. I have a very heavy sleeping bag. I am always cold. I'm actually wearing a hoodie right now. Uh, because I'm always cold. And so uh, that'll be one of my next investments is getting an, an ultra lightweight but heavy duty sleep system uh, just to lighten my load. Uh, even though it's a great backpack that I have and love my sleeping bag, it's nice and toasty warm. Um, it is the heaviest item that I have. So this is uh, us looking at some of the down trees. There are some very, very large trees on the mountain. The trails are actually very well kept in most places. We have our hiking sticks. Um, we are covered uh, on our arms, pad, heads in the lower elevations of our mosquitoes. This is technically summertime uh, for them. In this area, we've seen lots of woodpecker activity, there is some great rocks um, with lichens and plants, um, trees that have fallen over with entire root systems on there. Um, the forest is just really amazing. It is pretty different than the forests here in the Midwest, uh, for those of you who are here from the Midwest. Uh, so this is a view. Um, as we're getting out of the forest, you can see all of this gray rock on the mountain. So as water melts and as the glaciers are melting, um, it's taking a lot of that sediment down, lots of gray. Uh, but we're also seeing some great wildflowers, some great plants uh, that are out there. Things, Some of them are common to the, this area and others are not. And for running into other hikers on a daily basis, if you are close to either the parking lot areas or where you can drive to and day hike, we did actually see quite a few people in those areas. 
Uh, and, and when you're going to the designated campgrounds, there are so many sites and because this is the busy season, you do run into them. But when you're actually hiking and going one direction, you might have a couple people going the opposite direction or you just sort of bump into them as you go. I would say we probably saw maybe about a dozen different people um, on the trails each day while actually walking, but for the most part, you're out there by yourself or whomever you're walking with. Um, it would be only at the campsites where you sort of all congregate or at the, if there was a uh, campground uh, parking lot, someplace for the day hikers, they can just sort of mingle around to that you would run into every once in a while on the trail, especially every four days while you're picking up stuff, you would actually see people. It's not as destitute as one would think that you actually do have people out there, um, but it might be a few hours before you see another person after you come across them and continue on hiking. So we have some waterfalls here. Again, beautiful flowers. You can see all the snow on top of the mount or the glaciers on top of the mountains and these beautiful meadows as we're getting higher and higher up. Um, these are the alpine meadows that we got to see. You can see these creeks and streams that are running down here from the glaciers. So this is Summerlin right after lunch. There's a nice little shelter there. Um, met some 20 somethings out on the trail. They were Instagramming uh, <laughs> their views for the day. And then they were heading on back uh, where we were gonna keep on going with the packs. And so we're gonna be getting in higher elevations at this point. Uh, you can see here is my hiking partner right here. Um, the trail keeps on going and zigzagging up and up and up and I'm up top looking down. Um, we do hike at different speeds, but since we both know where we're supposed to end up, uh, a lot of times we'll just go to where that is. Also, because at this level, there are very few trees, I do try to if I'm in front, I do look back to make sure that I have an eye just in case there is a fall and injury, I can get back and vice versa. Um, if he is in front, he will also double check and stop every once in a while to make sure we have visual. Um, and if there is around a curve or something like that, then we do try to get a, a vocalization or an audio, audio clue to make sure that we're, we're still okay. Because um, at some points, I might be able to run up, but he's going really fast down and I'm going really slow down. So we just try to make sure that we're in contact with each other, but not necessarily hiking right on top of each other and next to each other the entire time. Uh, so again, here's more of the water running off way up here in the top of this picture. Um, the, the trail actually crisscrosses up. There's actually a person right there. <laughs> um, and there is snowpack. And we actually did cross many areas of snow in the summer. In the end of July, beginning of August, we were hiking on snow uh, directly. Uh, so we had to just sort of be aware of that. Uh, and there are no trees. The sun was very warm. It was cool out because of where the elevation, but the sun was very warm. Uh, and instead of slathering yourself in sunscreen, I actually do have a solar umbrella that I have strapped onto my particular pack to keep the sun off of my face um, and off of my hands so I don't burn as much and I don't have to wear as a lot of sunscreen. But we usually have lots of coverage on our, on our bodies. There were butterflies at this elevation. There are wildflowers at this elevation. They're peeking out from the crap. They're far and few between, um, but there is still a lot of wildlife that is in the area that you're like, but it's just rocks and snow. Uh, you do get to see a lot of other cool things at this elevation. Here's one of the lakes. And again, this is all snow uh, that is through there that you're just walking by. Um, the water is bluish greenish for a lot of it um, with all the minerals from the area. And again, snow, snow, snow. Here's us walking across this. This is the trail. Um, walking across the snowpack. Uh, there's lots of areas here. Um, luckily, because it is a main trail, even if there's not signs a lot of the places, you can see where everyone has been walking for the most part. Uh, we did see marmot. 
that's a marmot there. Again, alpine level, we also did see a pica, couldn't get a good photo of them. Um, lots of mosses at this area, a few little grasses as well. Uh, again, beautiful. It, we have blue skies. Again, very sunny while we were up here. We have these nice little fields, the trail that's going by. We really did enjoy it. Uh, more trails. This white plant right here is called beer, uh, bear grass. Uh, and then we did see mountain goats. And there was a whole herd of them. And they were right like across the path, walking across. And we sort of had to just wait for them to go across. Uh, wildlife obviously gets the right of way whenever you're out there. And so you just sort of do your thing and, and wait for them to go out. And then this is our summer land. Uh, if you notice at the picture here on the left, there's a pole and then there's a bag hanging from that pole. On this island uh, peninsula, this area where you sort of hike up these stairs, that's where we would camp for the night because there's water all down below. You had to, because of bears, you had to hang your food packs, anything that smelled, anything that was uh, really odorous, uh, personal products, things like that, in a bag on this pole. And there's a hook that's sort of hanging from this as well that you would be able to grab your bag, put on the end of this hook, and then lift it up and then try to hang it from the top. Depending on how much you were trying to lift and carry, that was easier for some than others because this pole is about 20, 30 feet up in the air and to prevent bears from uh, using it, taking your stuff, coming down. And there were other poles in the area that they must have started rotting down here below and the bears would just sort of push and knock them over and they would get all your stuff anyways. Uh, so we did not have any bear problem. You are not required to have bear canisters um, but you do have to hang your food or um, either using the poles that are provided at areas or have a separate bag where you're actually putting everything in and using a rope to loop it over or um, to be able to, there's sometimes some bear boxes you can put stuff in, but you are not required to have bear canisters, but you definitely did want to be aware of what was going on, as well as um, in some of the sheltery types of areas, like over at Summerland, um, you would actually have more chipmunks and small little rodents that were trying to get into your stuff that could nibble through a lot of things. Um, so you had to be aware of that as well, not just the big critters, but the little critters as well. So here is the bridge that we had to walk over from the island where we slept. Um, because this is a waterfall actually right here going down. And so the trail actually continues up this little mountain area. And beautiful scenery. We're, again, we're in alpine areas, up and down, up and down, lots of bare grass. Uh, this is the path through the meadow here. See all this blue lupine all over the place. It's a pretty narrow path, but you're just sort of going on through it. And we actually did see bear uh, while we were out there. This is bear scat. Um, we knew that they were close by seeing very fresh scat. When we went around the corner from where this scat was, that's where the bears were. Uh, and so you just sort of let them pass. And then as you do see hikers going either direction, uh, you let them know or they let you know what they've seen in wildlife and things like that. But in the grasses, there were mushrooms and flowers um, do you need a permit for a day hike? You will need to get, if you're going in the back country, um, they do want to know that you're actually out there. However, uh, for the, uh, you just have to have the, the permit to actually get into the park, the national park, whether it's a day pass or whether you have your annual national park pass or just the pass for, uh, Mount Rainier, wherever it might be. Um, and so it was, let's see here, for the week, it was $55 for the week for the National Park. 
And since we were going to be there longer than a week, we did the annual membership. So that was all national parks for the whole entire year is $80. So we figured if we were going to go to any other national park, um, we would have that pass and we'd be able to, to go and anywhere we wanted for the whole entire year. Uh, the permit, <coughs> excuse me, the permit itself for the Wonderland Trail was $20 when you went online. And whether you got the okay or not, uh, it was $20. It's non-refundable to put in the lottery to do the Wonderland Trail. So uh, it's a donation to the national parks the few years that we did it. Um, there were some very large trees there, um, Indian Bar to Nickel Creek. And as you can see, I mean, the bark on this evergreen versus the bark on this other evergreen, very different. So even though you're like, oh yeah, pine trees, oh, they're evergreen trees. If you really like stop and look around and not just try to pump through it, but to really see what is there, the diversity and the amount of different things that, you know, you, you don't even normally notice, really do stand out, especially in this type of environment. Uh, lots of fungus, as you saw from other pictures with dead logs. And down by Nickel Creek, we started to have these wonderful wildflower, wildflowers again near the water. Um, that seemed to be where you had those little crooks um, crevices, places where the seeds and soil could sort of start to form. Um, that's where you would actually get wildflowers up in the higher elevations. Obviously in the lower, it's where you actually had some sun as well if they were in the woodland areas. So, so far we're up here um, where we started. We've hiked this whole entire area down on this side right here. And like I said, the knee was still bleeding on and off throughout the whole time. We're going up and down in elevation, up and down in elevation. And we're basically hiking from location to location and going, okay, this is tough. We knew it was gonna be tough, but it was tough and we could tell it was tough. And we're like, we still, we're only a third of the way through at this point and it's tough. Do we want to keep going? Um, is it is it worth the the toughness to to see the rest of, of the mountain? We waited three years for this, um, and yes, we see beautiful scenery. Yes, we're seeing wonderful wildlife, but our bodies are definitely telling us that um, it's hard. And are we, do we want to continue? And so we started to think about that this next day. Um, we were like, you know, we're thinking we're going to be close to a road. And the farther we walk at this point, we're going to be getting farther and farther away from our car. Eventually, we'll be getting back where there's to the point of no return. But if we wanted to try to get a ride back to our car at this point, we could because we're going to be crossing the road several different times and we're fairly close to where we started from. Also, a couple of the hikers that were coming counterclockwise said that the area was covered in mosquitoes, even their DEET and uh, mosquito netting and everything was not cutting it. Uh, the campsite that we were going to be going to was actually closed. It flooded out. So we'd have to be traveling a little bit farther than we, what we wanted to do. And so we're like, okay, when we get to this road crossing, let's hitch a ride back. And we're like, are we sure we really want to do this? Do we want to complete this task that we've been set out to do that we've been wanting to do? Or do we want to really enjoy the mountain? And we're like, let's enjoy it. Let's not just do it because we want to do it. Let's enjoy it. So we actually hitched a ride with a, a mother and her like seven-year-old son. He was, a, he was a young kid. They were actually going to where we started from, uh, White River, because they were planning on doing a through hike. And because they live locally, they were dropping off their food at their stations and not shipping it. So they basically moved all their buckets of food that they were going to, to do. And they 
um, put us in our, put them in the car, put us in the car. We actually had our backpacks on our laps sitting in their car because there was really no room for it. So I don't know what the ride looked like at all. To be honest with you, there was a backpack in front of me and we figured, okay, we will then get to sunrise. Um, we're going to check out what we have and we have to go pick up all of our food. Um, we spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on food plus the shipping of that food. Um, we don't want to just leave it. Uh, and then we can also see the other places around the mountain. So this is at sunrise. Uh, this would have been one of our second to the last days. Uh, it's very built up. There were a ton of people there at sunrise, but there's some gorgeous trails there, gorgeous meadows. There's rangers everywhere. It's more like what you think of a national park situation would be, not on this trail that we would see a few people here and a few people there or in the parking lot. They actually had lots of building structures there. Um, but we did do day hikes because we wanted to actually do as much of the trail as we could um, without just being stuck on it and, and going around. So if you notice, there's actually a wall here of rocks that were built up so that the mountain wouldn't keep on sliding down on you. And so you're walking on this narrow trail and if you got too close to the edge, this is all very loose gravel and it would start to crumble. But again, in those crevices, lots of wonderful wildflowers and butterflies uh, that we were seeing all around at sunrise in these beautiful alpine meadows really good view of the mountain um, from up there looking back at it. Uh, here's this is these are the types of signs that you see on the Wonderland Trail. It actually tells you where the camps are, how far away they are. Um, here's a couple that's day hiking along the trail. Again, we're back in snow and ice at a high elevation and they do really want you to make stay on the trails. Uh, the soil takes so long to build up for these plants. Any type of busting the crust and walking off of it harms the plants tremendously. Uh, there were actually lots of volunteers at the main areas where they're like, please don't step on the step on the plants. Please don't go off the trail. Please come back in because people are trying to take their selfies and they're trying to be by those plants instead of just zooming in on the camera. They tried to stand there and, and you could see the degradation of the plants um, happening very easily where, because they're so beautiful. Everyone wants to get close to them. Uh, again, we get to see the frozen lakes that are up here. Again, um, this is actually fenced off. This is the water that they actually use at the center. So they don't want people to be going in there. Um, again, wonderful flowers that we're able to see. More of the hiking trails. Uh, Sunrise Camp is actually a mile down this path. And if you notice, Here's at the top, if you look down in this valley where this little tiny pool of water is, that's where Sunrise Camp is. So from where Sunrise is, you'd actually be going down to go to the camps. So if you were actually at the camp at night, you'd be going up to then come back down and over. But there's wonderful mountains, ranges all around. Uh, and so we're like, okay, well, what do we wanna do next? Um, they weren't expecting us for a few more days at uh, the different stops. So we're, so we're like, okay, we have some time here. So we went to Grove to the Patriarchs. This was not even close to our map. This is Box Canyon down here. This is where we got our ride, where we actually were driven all the way back up to the top of the map. Um, but way over here <laughs> um, is Grove of the Patriarchs. And this is where the largest trees are basically found within the National Park. If we were doing the just the Wonderland Trail, we never would have gone to this spot. We never would have hiked to this spot. We never would have seen this area at all. It would be too far off the beaten path to actually do it. Um, this is actually one of the trees. It actually shows all these different age markers of when it was actually cut down versus what was actually going on at the time. I mean, these things are huge, massive trees. Um, and you're in this wonderful forest. The water is almost crystal blue here. Uh, you can see right through it. And there's some great insects on the different railings and on the different trails there. Um, and just south of that uh, is where we actually camped 
for the night because we had to find new campgrounds. Um, There's some holly. These are some ghost plants that they actually have there. Um, they're not very common and they're purely white and they come out of the ground. Uh, these are actually the flowers. They're really cool. And no, this is not more scat. Uh, this is actually a slug. It was a very large slug on the trail um, that we actually saw. It was about as big as your thumb that was calling across. And so got a picture of them. Uh, very lush area here. Lots of ferns and butterworts and liverworts and, and ground cover. Again, habitat we would not have seen. We had the pine forests and then we had the alpine meadows, but this area and down below here, they actually had some hot springs. Um, so this water is actually bubbling um, from the hot springs that are in this area. Again, can't go in them. Uh, they are protected, but right off the trail, you can actually see the springs bubbling. And we never would have seen any of this if we would have stuck to our plan. Beautiful waterfalls all over the area. Uh, at this area, this is a uh, Twin Lakes, and again, super deep blue glacial water that was running off in this very deep gorge that we were able to see. Lichens and these gorgeous meadows uh, that we got to see. Next, we hopped in our car and we drove to Longmire. Longmire is the place where we actually dropped off food and had to check in with the park rangers to let them know that we were starting our trip. So when we went to Longmire, uh, we told them we are off the trail. And so they don't have to be checking in with us. Um, this is the, the main uh, building for the rangers. There's also a lodge there. Uh, they, these are the old gas pumps. They do not work anymore. But if you notice on this asphalt picture, there's this groove in here. There were actually thousands of ants, red ants, that were in this groove going back and forth and back and forth, trailing that we actually followed along across the lawn. Um, it was really cool to stop and watch ants uh, for, for a while. Again, looking at the little details sometimes is way better than trying to just get the big picture. Uh, lots of ferns on the trail here. Here's Longmire on the map. So we're actually at the bottom left-hand corner of the mountain at this time, or the southwest corner. Mushrooms, here I am getting my junior ranger badge. Uh, since we had some downtime and some driving, I was able to finish the different things and um, get my junior ranger badge from the ranger there at the Longmire Nature Center. Uh, we then went to Paradise and Nisqually. And so this area here, um, right, over here, this is again, more water. This used to be an entire glacier. Uh, it has retreated all the way back up here to the mountain. Um, there are photographs of this glacier where you can't even see the bottom of that glacier in this picture because it is so huge. Uh, global warming, climate change has definitely done a doozy on the glaciers here at the park. And so there's a lot of places you go where you can see these pictures from the 1900s and look at the exact same area now. And other than the glaciers, you can see exactly where you're at. Um, so this is elevation uh, here at 5,500 feet. Uh, and then after we went to Paradise, we said, you know what? We are close to Mount St. Helens. We are old enough to remember when Mount St. Helens went off, we want to go see Mount St. Helens. This is Mount St. Helens. It is still desolate. There is still very little plant life around where it exploded. You can see the actual part where the crater, where it exploded the entire mountain off. Um, we went to a ranger program, learned all about, they have a great nature center there to, to learn more about it. We were young kids at the time, but I remember when it actually happened. And it's amazing on, I mean, you see these little tiny wildflowers, but those were huge trees that were just blown over, decimated, gone, that uh, have, the area has not come back. You can still see a lot of the down logs um, 40 years later. And it's amazing that, again, we never would have seen this if we had stayed on the Wonderland Trail uh, firsthand. 
we also talked to that woman and son while they while we hitchhiked and they drove us up and they said that their husband actually worked at the Northwest Wildlife Park. And so we actually drove there, wrote a thank you card, went in, sent, gave the thank you card to the desk, hoping that the he got it. We don't know if they did or not. Um, we didn't want to intrude too much. Um, but it's sort of like a zoo for the animals that are normally found in the Northwest area. However, all of the habitats are completely natural. It pretty much has just a little bit of screening and fencing to protect the people from the area. Um, but the animals are, are pretty wild and we actually spent there. Then uh, one of the places that we cashed, sent food at was Mowich Lake. So we drove back to Mount Rainier and <laughs> went to Mowich Lake. Now this is on the northwest side of the mountain and look at how crystal clear this water is. This is about 15 feet deep right there. <coughs> And you can see the logs, you can see the, there's uh, the rocks. It is crystal clear at Mowich Lake. There were frogs in there. There were crayfish that we could find. Um, we actually did camp here at the campsite that we reserved on our permit on the day we were actually supposed to be there. Um, we hiked around, did, did some of the trails around the lake. Um, so we're way up here. Um, this is where we actually had to go to pick up our food. So we had access to it. There's a little tiny ranger cabin there. Um, so if we would have walked it, this was the day that we were going to arrive at that spot because they would store your food until you were supposed to be there. Cause you had to write the dates on it. So we couldn't just say, oh, we're off the trail. Let's get our stuff. It wouldn't be there. So we had to wait until we were supposed to be there to still go to the same spots and because the rangers were driving there we were also able to drive to those locations and then do day hikes in that spot and you can see here's the trail um, trees winding around each other as well uh, what was really cool that we saw at Mowich Lake that we didn't see at any other place is that the evergreen trees you can see the growth um, this is all new growth from this year and you can see it on this and on this. So the old growth from previous years, the darker green and the new growth was lighter green so that you could see actually how well it grew that year in comparison to, to other years if you're coming back year after year after year. Um, I've never really seen this on plants before where it was that obvious and it was really only in Mowich Lake that we noticed this. We didn't see this in a lot of the other areas. And I'm not sure because we didn't have a lot of greenery around us where it was more either alpine or these big giant trees and we were looking up at them and we couldn't see. But this was more mid-sized, smaller trees that were around us and everything had this wonderful fresh growth compared to the old growth. Um, a very big surprise um, that was in this area. And Mowich Lake is very hard to get to. Um, not too many people really go to this side of the mountain or the roads are very windy. It's not off of a main path. It's gravelly. Um, it's one way at some point that you have to just sort of pull off and let other cars go by. You're using logging roads, lots of switchbacks. Uh, and so you're sort of driving down. Uh, now it is peak season so you do have lots of cars that will do their for their day hike and then they all drive out um, during the day but sunrise has paved roads going to it and it's off the main path as well as longmire and when you see those pictures of thousands of people all together on the national parks that is what that is like the rest of the park if you are on some of these trails um especially if you're going around on your own, you definitely get away from that. Uh, this was the, the, one of the vantage points looking down into the valleys um, once you hike a few miles out from Mowich Lake itself. Um, this is looking back at, again, the mountain and the, the lake itself. Uh, this was the bridge, Fairfax Bridge. It is only one lane. So if you notice way in the back here, there's this yellow sign, this arrow that says left. Well, this whole entire bridge, only one car can go at a time. So you sort of have to 
be on the one side of the road or on the other. You know, sort of try to peer around and look and go, um, do you, any other cars coming? Nope. All right, let's go for it. And hopefully they're going slow enough that when you're getting to this point, because there's a sharp turn to the left, that they sort of stop and are looking as well, because otherwise someone's going to have to back up the entire way across. Um, that was a surprise. Did not, did not expect that when we were going out there. Um, but again, this is an area of the trails that um, maybe the locals will go to but the typical tourist is not going to be going to this area. It takes several hours of driving. Um, again, the roads aren't necessarily paved where you're going as well. Uh, we then decided to go to Puget Sound and this is Point Defiance Park. And it has a zoo there, an aquarium. We did not do those types of things. It does have a lot of walking paths that are there. Um, I have never been to Puget Sound, and so I wanted to sort of check the area out. This is a, a good place to go. Um, they actually have many manicured gardens with different types of flowers, uh, the zinnias and the rose gardens. Um, it's like going to a, a botanic gardens. It was amazing. I was taking pictures of so many insects and flowers and bugs. And yes, they're horticultural plants. They're not wild plants, um, but they were still gorgeous uh, and they were still doing the part. And also got to get to the saltwater. And coming from the Chicagoland area, we have the lake, but we do not have seaweeds of all these different varieties. This one looked like flames and then there was brown and there was green and there were barnacles and mussels and and there was this, these crabs um, down the corner here, these little tiny crabs that were running all over the place and you just don't get that in the Chicago land area. It was great to see all this um, aquatic wildlife. We did actually see um, otters in the ocean. We actually got to see some some kelp-like plants in the water, uh, things that you know we've only seen on television or movies. Um, we actually got to see those in real person. Again, never would have happened if we would have stayed on the trail. Uh, on the in the park area, they have these blackberry bushes everywhere, and people are harvesting them. It is open to the public, so we were harvesting blackberries. We usually in the parks are eating some of the plants that we know that are safe. Um, we've had thimbleberries in Acadia. Um, we've had blueberries in Maine, <laughs> um, but this uh, was blackberries <laughs> in Washington. And this structure right here had stairs and slides and people would literally be going up the stairs, up the stairs, up the stairs, up the stairs, all the way up this hill and then sliding down, sliding down, sliding down and then keep on going back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, oh, it didn't matter if they were a kid. It didn't matter if they were an adult. It was so fun um, to be able to go up and down those. This would be a great way of practicing for the Wonderland Trail. Um, unfortunately, the stairs over at um, in, in Chicagoland, Swallow Cliffs is probably maybe two, three of these sets at the most. And so you're just walking up and down and up and down. Not nearly as fun as the slides, which I thought was a great idea to get people out. Um, we also went to Nisqua National uh, Wildlife Refuge. And so this is a big map here, again, off Puget Sound. And it was this mud flats. And because of the mussels under the mud flats, you can actually see the water bubbling up from the different types of critters underneath the mussels. And you can see the tracks from the different birds and mammals that are walking on these mud flats at low tide versus high tide. This is the boardwalk. Um, and this whole entire thing floods uh, when there's high tide. This is low tide right now. So you're able to walk all the way out, almost out to the sound, which was a really cool area. Um, there's little tiny birds that are trying to get the insects. Some of the water had almost like an iridescent look to it. And so I was able to get Mount St. Helens uh, badges. I got a Citizens Ranger badge from Mount Rainier, which is for the adults. Plus I got the Junior Ranger badge. 
I got the Nisqually Wildlife Refuge badge and then the Protect the Fragile Meadows Stay on the Trails from the volunteer that was um, passing these out. And then we also did stay at a, a regular state park in Washington. That's little tiny metal. It's on the tokens uh, for there. So I would have gotten maybe or most likely the Mount Rainier Junior Ranger badge and none of the other educational components if we stayed on the Wonderland Trail uh, because we wouldn't have been able to have time or to actually do them. And so we came for the mountain, but we left seeing the ocean and much, much more. So we have about another five, 10 minutes. Uh, if there is any type of uh, questions that people have. Um, oh, you're in the Seattle area and you like seeing the highlights, able to see uh, stated highlights by a visitor. So I'm glad, glad I, well, thank you. Yes, it was very interesting um, being able to, to check out multiple areas. Um, I would have loved to have been able to do the whole entire hike. And, um, but even with a lot of training and things like that, it was just, I mean, we, there was a woman there, she was a professional soccer player and she did the trail in three days, which means she basically walked slash ran a marathon three days in a row. She was living on gels. So those special packages of gel um, for nutrients and a water bottle that just had a filter on it that she would just dip and then drink right out of. Uh, purification system. Yes, definitely purification system. We did have our pump so we could actually, uh, an MSR pump that we could pump water and put into our water bottles. And then we also did have the um, Sawyer valve as well that we could just dip and then drink out of the Sawyer valve. Um, we weren't sure if we were going to have enough water. That's, that's always what my fear is that I run out of water. Um, we always have extra food, um, but I wanted to be able to do it. And then we had a CC alum from Montana. All right. Yay, Cornell. Woohoo! Um, I did see that it got posted on there. Uh, so that's, that's wonderful. And that sort of started all of my adventures as well. I was able to be a, a student of international training while I was at Cornell. And I went down to Texas and canoed the Rio Grande and was able to study in Africa through Cornell. So awesome school. I highly recommend it. And next adventure. Well, that is a good question. Uh, we actually were planning on going out to Colorado this year. We were actually en route. I think we just made it into Colorado um, when we had a health concern in the family um, that we wanted to go visit them. Luckily, they were only in the hospital 15 minutes away from someone that I knew in Colorado. And um, they actually lived in Montana or lived in Wyoming. And we uh, went to Wyoming to sort of pick up them, the other family members brought them back down to uh, Colorado and the person did pass. It wasn't COVID related at all. Um, it was just other health conditions. And so we ended up taking our vacation, our backpacking trip and stuff and doing it um, for family and memorials and things like that. So um, what's going to be next for next year? I'm up for suggestions. Uh, 20 Try Olympia National Park. Oh, that's another one out on, the, out on the coast. We do try. We were thinking about actually going there um, on this particular trip uh, when we were sort of saying what else we were going to do. And oh, we got a lot of people that are out in the the Seattle area and out in Washington. Excellent. Um, right before this, I actually was at a, a STEM conference out at uh, California. First time ever in California. And we would really like to do the Redwoods uh, in California, Northern California, and check out uh, there as well, and possibly even do the whole coastline on one. That's one of the things that we're hoping to do. Um, the Orca Pods, Point Defiance. Um, yes, I was actually uh, in Seattle once before, and I was able to see the orcas. Uh, went on a actual boat and got to see them. 
Um, so that was very cool and got to go into one of the museums that were talking about how they had the K-pod and the L-pod and, and the different information about them and stuff. So definitely, uh, I am not big on boats and water. Um, I prefer to be on land. I have um, really good motion sickness. And, and so uh, when we did our trip to Isle Royale, we had to take a boat. We actually drove an extra six hours to get a shorter boat ride um, instead of saving that driving and taking a longer boat ride just because I was that nervous that I would get sick. Grand Canyon rim to rim. You know what? We did think we that is on the bucket list. I've been to the Grand Canyon. However, my partner has not. Um, he has never been to the Grand Canyon and it is pretty cool. And so doing a rim to rim, I, I'm trying to, to get him in on that. Um, <laughs> so that, that one will be a great one. Maybe, maybe for 2021, that would be, that'd be great. I'd be up for it and be happy to do a program on it. And basically for that one, once you go, you, you're sort of down and out. So, um, definitely would have to to go for that one. So I'm good with that. I love also warm and hot. So I have no problem hiking in the desert. Um, we were doing uh, the Saguaro National Forest in, let's see, it was, it was August and it was like 120 and it was around noon and I was hiking out there and having a great old time and like, Ooh, this is great. And the rangers are like, um, ma'am, you need to come in. It's it's hot out and you, you have to be very careful to be dehydrated. I'm like, well, I have water. That's not a problem. And, you know, this is nothing. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, this is, this, there's no humidity. It's nothing like in Chicago land where you have 90 degrees and hundred percent humidity and you're just like sweating. It's great. I, I don't mind the 120 and sunny. I just need a little bit of shade with my umbrella that's attached to me. And then backpack the lost coast in Northern California. Ooh, okay, that's another good suggestion. Yeah, I'm up for up for suggestions, definitely. I love to hike and backpack. Um, we actually have on our radar um, the, it would be a through trail. So we'd have to try to get enough vacation time to be able to do it. It's 300 miles. And it is across Arkansas and Oklahoma. And so um, we actually have family down there in the Texas area that said they'd be willing to um, drop us off at one end and then pick us up at the other end. <laughs> uh, so we're like, that's pretty good. Um, Cause the logistics are, are always a big deal. So we don't have to walk back and forth. We can just walk through, but we want to, do the Colorado trail at some point, or at least that 80 mile loop in uh, Colorado. That was what we were hoping to do that we weren't able to do. So there's some great hikes out there. I'm not sure if I'll ever do a, a through hike to like the PTC or the AT or something like that. Um, good hiking in Wind River. Yes, um, that is where family is at. And we have hiked many a trail in the Wind River Range. We actually did part of the Continental Divide Trail a few years ago. We actually helped blaze it. They're trying to get the signs up. So we're out there with nails and hammers and metal signs <laughs> that we were carrying with us for the week and uh, put those up and it was great, yes. And there's um, the Red Gorge and, oh, Wind River is really cool. We've also done some great geocaching there. There was a down plane in the side of the mountain. We were finding like the ashtrays and different pieces of the shrapnel that were out there, um, which is very, very cool. So yeah, um, and also for Wind River Range in Wyoming, the individual who passed um, wants their ashes spread out on the range at Tao Lake. So we'll probably be doing that um, just for a memorial for them. So. Definitely be doing Wind River for sure. Again, regardless um, of if it's a, a vacation or uh, doing a memorial hike, that will be the plan. All right, it is seven o'clock. Is there anything else? I see Donna, you've unmuted your mic. Well, I, you know, we could probably talk to you all night, Emily, but you know, we do have to let you go sometime. Um, this has just been tremendous. I don't see any more questions in the chat box. This is great. I, you know, I'm still, you know, 
reveling in your continental divide. This just adds to it. I did have one last question for you. Um, mm -hmm. What about the fires? How do you plan for that? The fires out west. You know, you know what you yeah, plan. Um, uh, you be your best laid plans, and then that works against you. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of times, because you really don't have signals and coverage, even with cell phones and things like that, um, if you hear of sparks and things like that, um, you can see the smoke. That's that's for sure. We could actually see the plumes. It was, but you just don't know where or how close you are. Um, and that's the biggest thing is that we were in Fort Collins, which is north of Denver, and the fires were going through there. Um, you'd actually get like all of a sudden your phone would just start squealing and it'd be like, oh, there's an evac evacuation alert for this county and this area. And you're like, we're not from here. We don't, are we there? Do like, is it, are we just in that signal in that band? Um, luckily, I, because I do have friends in the area, we were able to contact them and be like, hey, and they're like, oh, no, no, this is, this is a little bit different. This is off the beaten path. Um, but you do have to keep in mind that if you go into the black, like if there's an area that's already been burnt, that is the safest area. Um, so if you are hiking and you, you're coming up with smoke and I mean, you'll be able to sort of see it on the horizon or if it's coming towards you, things like that. If you can get into an area that's already burnt and already black, um, if there's another coming around on the other side, that's going to be the safest place for you. Wow. What an adventure. Okay. Well, Emily, thank you so much for tonight. This was really great. We're ready for the next adventure. We want to be first on the list when you come and talk about it. So I will. Wonderful. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Donna. And thank you for everyone who attended, especially all the Cornell folks. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> so thanks, everyone. I hope you all have a pleasant evening. And we'll say good night. Good night. Good night.